<laughs> what, what, you can put the podcast music, no? Oh, the whistle music. Yeah. That just makes me happy, right? I wish that was my theme music. I'd be in a good mood. Anytime always. you walked into a, a room that, that that just played? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We're live on YouTube. Hello, YouTubes. This is our first live for YouTube. Yeah, YouTubes. Hey, is it? Yeah. An actual, okay. An actual real live live. High five. High live. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Facebook. Oh, it's all oh, don't encourage him. <laughs> and the pack and elite. All right. We're Hi. live everywhere. Okay, we are literally live everywhere. Holy smokes. You can't you can't escape yeah. us. Yeah. We are, <laughs> We're everywhere. <laughs> Good luck trying not to see us. <laughs> so uh, hey everybody. Hey it's everyone. Dina and Logan and Chelsea. And we actually have Alex over here. Doing her thing. She's hiding. She's hiding. We're in the boardroom. We were gonna do it up in the office, but the office is all COVID-y. So most people are working from home. Yeah, so it's kind of empty. It's a little sad. It's a little sad. It's well, a lot sad. It is. But there's a lot more snacks around without Skylar and Brett. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a positive. <laughs> I don't know. I'm snacking pretty fiercely up there. <laughs> I got into them yesterday. Did you? <laughs> yesterday? No. See, there's these really delicious, what are they? They're like Fig Newtons, except mm -hmm. they're like organic. Mm -hmm. mm, and those are the first ones to go, aren't they? They are, yeah. Yeah, those are the first ones to go. Yeah. So we're doing a take two this week of looking at food ingredients from different food companies. <laughs> yeah. Last week, we were having some serious technical difficulties with the internet. You're just hoping it goes better than last week. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. What, mm. I think that one's a big mistake on my part. So if you, if you stuck through though, for all our videos. <laughs> yeah. You deserve some sort of prize. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this, this is your prize. <laughs> yeah. You're We're going to do it right this time. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so last week we asked a lot of you to submit your uh, your dog food labels and we said, hey, we'll talk about them, we'll analyze them, and uh, um, that's what we're going to do today, mm. what we were going to do last week, but we were technolo technologically uh, challenged. So Chelsea, yeah. are we going to do the ones that we did last week, or are we going to start with new ones, or what are we going to do here? I feel like the best thing to do would just be to start fresh. So I have, uh, I have some set up here ready for us to go. Okay. I have uh, five picked out. So depending on how much time I have more, but we'll start with these five and see how far we get. Okay. And before we get okay. started, why don't you just tell us in the comments where you're watching from? We'd love to say hi and, you know, connect with you there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And are you working from home with your dog? We've got a few of us here too to answer your questions on mm -hmm. the fly. So as we're discussing a particular food, if you have any questions, like let us know, and we'll catch them almost, uh, almost real time. Yeah, and we can kind of have a conversation about the different foods and the different ingredients that are that may or may not be in in your own dog's food. And if you want to add your, how do they add their labels, Alex, uh, uh, Chelsea? Just in the, in the comments. Yeah, so they can add their labels. We have a, um, a list already, but any foods that get added, I'll add to the list. Um, just because we can't get through every everyone in every every uh, video. So we'll just keep doing them until we do all the foods. Every food. Every food. Okay, this is my favorite thing ever. I love looking at dog food labels. So if you want like the full on analysis, uh, make sure you send the ingredient panel and the guaranteed analysis, please. Yes. And that'll really, really help. And just so people know, we're starting with the, the labels that were submitted in the pack last week or the week before. So I think we had 30 or so to get through. So we're kind of on the second flight of labels. It so, and now we're going live to the main page with a million viewers. Mm -hmm and elite as well elite, the pack and also on youtube and also on youtube yes. and also on youtube hooray because that's how we roll <laughs> yes all right okay By the way, week four week four 
four weeks in a row. I mean, last week was kind of half of live video, but it still counts. It counts. <laughs> but that uh, in my KPIs. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So what are we going to start with? Okay, let me uh, let me share my screen with you here. We tried doing this at at, at um, PetSmart, mm. and we did it with treats. And I did it with Bai. She, she was so nervous. She was because right all, all the all the workers would mm. they were sniffing us out. Bai, she's like, let's go, let's go. They're gonna kick us out. <laughs> Bai, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> and even if they do kick you out, so what? Yeah, exactly. We'll live. What are we okay. Here? Oh, oh, okay. So we're starting with a, uh, a raw food, I see. Okay, um, this is primal. Uh, okay, I, I already know this food pretty well. So can we scroll down and look at the guaranteed analysis? Absolutely. That's, a, that's the first thing that I'm going to look at when I look at a raw food. Um, because in the wild, we did some research, Dr. Marion Smart and I, and we got this information from zoos and across the board, you know, all the whole prey wild animals that they were feeding their zoo animals, they're just, you know, throw them over the fence. On the whole, they averaged uh, like twice as much protein as fat. And that's what you really want to look for on your raw food label is twice as much protein as fat. Um, fat is super healthy for your dog. It's super awesome. But on the whole, wild animals are only about 10% fat, like max. So once you start really, really going over that, what happens is fat, even though it's super healthy and has a lot of health benefits for your dogs, it's relatively devoid of, of nutrition. So it doesn't have the vitamins. It doesn't have the minerals that protein and, and other food ingredients do. So it when you get a lot of fat in your food, it tends to cannibalize the other nutrients. Mm. Um, and to add to that, fat has twice as many uh, calories per ounce or grain than either protein or carbohydrate. So if you want, if you're feeding your dog a high fat diet, you either need to uh, have a dog that's deficient in a lot of key nutrients, or you just need to make him morbidly obese and feed him way more food than he, he should be eating. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that I don't like about this guaranteed analysis is the equal parts protein and fat. I would much rather see a significant amount uh, of, of more protein and, and, and less fat for sure. What are the ingredients? I don't think the ingredients, I don't think there's any issue with these ingredients. Um, so, uh, okay, so, oh, there's a couple. So we have beef hearts, beef, beef livers, uh, beef both. Where is just beef? I don't see it there. No. Interesting. Might be on the bones. So we have, um, I, I like organ meat. I, I'm not sure I want all of my dog's food to be organ meat, but I like organ meat. Um, the one thing that I look for is, is a wide range of organs. So I know there's some raw foods that will have kidneys in there, uh, maybe even adrenals or, or long neck or beef blood, um, which is also an organ. Uh, and, and I really, really like to see that. Uh, this has a couple ground beef bones. Sure. Um, I love that the produce is organic. Um, mm. I, I think that's fantastic. Uh, it's got a little bit of clay in there. Super awesome. What I don't like is a salmon oil. And I would advise everybody here to not purchase a dog food, even a raw food that has fish oil in it because, um, it, it just, it oxidizes. It, it is, so you tend to thaw it out. It's not sealed. And that salmon oil is just sitting there exposed to oxygen mm -hmm. and, and, and the EPA and the DHA, those fatty acids that are in it are, are the most delicate of all the fatty acids and, and the oxygen gets to them. Their bonds break apart and they just go rancid. And then it's just like a, you know, free radicals are going to build up in your dog because of this. And that's what causes degeneration, inflammation, and premature aging. So I don't like to see fish oils added to, uh, to any 
commercial diet. Um, I don't, I don't like coconut oil. I don't think any dog should be eating coconut oil to any great degree. Um, the problem I feel with coconut oil is is high in saturated fat. Uh, animals, unless they're grass fed, are already too high in saturated fat. It's a bigger health issue for us than dogs, but it's still a health issue because it changes their microbiome. But most importantly, coconut oil contains lauric acid, which kind of technically is not a medium chain uh, fatty acid. It's more, it, it behaves more like a long term chain fatty acid. And uh, there's actually today, if you look at our blog post that went out today, Dr. Mm -hmm. Jean Hovey, who is an advisor for uh, AFCO, she uh, came out as well and said, here's why I don't think your dog should be eating coconut oil. So you might want to check out that po post. Yeah, it's Maybe. a really interesting read. Like, can we put a link to it in the comments? Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Let's do that. Uh, quinoa is okay. It's not great for the planet, but it's fine for your dog. Um, everything else is there. I, the, the alfalfa is a big GMO crop, but it's organic. So that's fine. The vitamin E supplement, you hear this from us all the time. Um, don't make sure your food doesn't have synthetic vitamins and minerals. The problem with raw foods is if you want to make the complete and balanced claim, you have to put more vitamin E in there than God ever intended. Um, th that amount of vitamin E does not exist in nature. Mm. And the reason for that is AFCO really only makes their minimum requirements for shelf stable commercial foods. So foods that sit on, in a bag on a shelf for months on end, sometimes years. Mm. Um, so those, the oils in those foods Oxidize. We talked about the dangers of oxidation because it, it really ramps up the free radicals and inflammation in your dog. So they need just intolerably high levels of vitamin E um, as an antioxidant to try to fight that free radical uh, damage. And they, th th this is really an eye opener for kibble um, compared to fresh food. Like that amount of vitamin E just doesn't exist in nature. You mm -hmm. can't get enough vitamin E naturally to uh, get the amount of just sheer antioxidants that you need to fight the free radical damage that will happen when you're feeding your dog like a shelf stable, uh, a shelf stable commercial kibble. So overall, um, I don't like that there's too much fat. Um, don't like the salmon oil, don't like the coconut oil, everything else seems fine. I, I, I love the berries added to it. I'd give it like a B minus, a B minus. Yeah. Well, we talked about writing this out last yeah, week and we, we're not writing it. We out. ordered some, yes. <laughs> some, some boards. Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no <laughs> <way>. <laughs> All right. What's next, Josh? Okay. Is there so any questions on this? No, no, no. So Perfect. Other foods after Okay. Uh, so the next one is submitted by Sylvia. I, I apologize. I'm not going to try to attempt to say your last name because I don't <laughs> want to say it wrong. Um, and it is a... Farmina food. Ah, that's but, a pretty package. Yes, it is a pretty package. Um, that's so the cat food. We're to assume that there is, this is cat food. Hang on. We'll wait. Maybe. Well, she said it was this one, but I couldn't, there is no dog one. There's the ND prime there, it looks like. Let's try that one. So, what are you doing this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Joss. <laughs> nah. <laughs> and that little super slow because we're on Zoom. Yep. All right. Born Can you apple. The background while we move to another one? Probably not. Here, let's just skip to another one. Sorry. Sorry, Sylvie. Sorry, Sylvie. Sylvia, I promise Sylvia, you I'll come back. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're on to origin. This is interesting because a lot of people uh, feed this stuff here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's look at the ingredients here. Uh, actually, let's start with the, with the guaranteed nut ant. Let's do that. I got to move this thing over here. So first thing we need to do is figure out how much carbohydrate is in this food. If you want to figure out you know, do you know why foods don't tell you how much carbohydrate is in them? Uh, two reasons. First is they probably don't want you 
to know. And second is because there is no established need for carbohydrate in, in the diet, then AFCO doesn't require them to report it on the guaranteed analysis. So yeah. So most pet food manufacturers go, okay, we won't. Yeah. So you have to do a little bit of math if you want to figure out, um, how much carbohydrate is in this food. So what you do is you add up, do you want to do this on the fly? You're ready this time. Uh, This this is not our first rodeo. Okay. (laughs) So you add up crude protein, which is 38 Mm -hmm. plus fat, which is 15 Mm -hmm. plus ash, which is eight. If the ash isn't listed on a kibble, use like seven, seven and a half. That's the average. Uh, plus uh, moisture, which is 12. I don't use fiber because fiber is still carbohydrate. It's, so in, that, it's indigestible, but it's so that's 73, 73. So this food is, oh, that's good. This food is only 27% carbohydrate. And that's like 100 minus the 73, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I skipped that part. Yeah. That's yeah, the so lowest we've had. Yeah, that's actually, we had one that was, that came in at 30, which was pretty good. So, yep. uh, you know, I, I, I like that. You really do want, here's a rule of thumb, guys. If you're looking to feed your dog a kibble, really try not to go over 30% uh, uh, carbohydrate. Just, just don't. It's, it's inflammatory for your dog. It causes so many issues that if you don't know what they are, do the healthy dog challenge. Is that in the units now in the pack? It is, Chelsea set it up. Yeah, it is. So for those of you who are pack members, look in your units and the whole healthy dog challenge is in there. And we talk about all these ingredients and why they uh, may or may not be harmful for your dog. And if uh, if you're not a pack member, just go to the Dogs Naturally website and then you can just sign up for that. It's free. It's simple. Not a big deal. So first we have chicken meat. Awesome. We have some eggs. We have some turkey meat. We have herring, liver, flounder. So, I mean, there's obviously it's, it's low carbohydrate. So there's a decent amount of meat in this. Um, it's, it's good. And it's not that it's meat and not meal. The problem with meals that it's double cooked. So meal before the manufacturer gets it has already been uh, heated and steamed and made into a powder. So it's um, uh, whereas meat is not. Uh, now we're getting into lentils. You know what's funny is they show you the percentage of meat, but then when it gets down to the starch, they're like, "Yeah, we're out. Yeah. <laughs> it's four percent turkey heart, but we're not going to tell you how much lentils are in there." Um, we got a little bit of ingredient splitting there. Um, they're like, hey, we'll use red lentils and green lentils. And then by splitting those two ingredients, you have to understand that the ingredient panel uh, is listed by weight from heaviest mm. amount of ingredients to lightest amount. So most to least. So what they're doing is they're taking their fresh chicken meat and they're saying, you know, it's 13% of the formulation. But then what they do is they split up. Look at this. Whole red lentils, right in the middle of the label there. Mm-hmm. Whole green lentils, lentil fiber. fiber. If, if, if they just said lentils, then what would happen was that would hypothetically bump it a lot higher up the label. And it might end up being like the first, second or third ingredient. So that's called ingredient splitting and uh, beware of that. Here's my problem with legumes and legumes are lentils, uh, beans, peas, uh, chickpeas, which are also in this. And I'm gonna throw potatoes in there. They're not, they're not uh, lentils, but they have the same problem. Uh, 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 three problems. First, there's starch, and we all know the problems with starch. Uh, second problem is is that lentils, in addition to oats and wheat, contain the most glyphosate of any other food, um, and that's because before they harvest this stuff, they spray it with Roundup. So it's just soaking with Roundup. Mm. And then they just harvest it, put it in a truck, and then off it goes into your dog's food. And we know that that glyphosate is linked to cancer now. And most importantly, it's also patented as an antibiotic, and it is an antibiotic. So it destroys the 
all the, the gut bacteria that live in your dog's gut. So it's going to cause some significant damage to his microbiome, to his gut bacteria. So that's one problem with grain-free foods and the legumes that are in them. The second problem is, is that legumes are really, really um, high in lectins. M most starches, but legumes in particular are. And lectins are anti-nutrients um, that uh, that are problematic for your dog. They, um, they can eat little holes in his gut and they can cause inflammation. So what I don't like about this, I, I would, I don't want to see any carbohydrate in a food, but if it has to be there, I would actually rather grains than, than legumes. So that's my biggest problem, um, with this food. And I just wish that um, the, the fruits were, uh, organic, uh, but they're not. So, uh, there's yeah. also like, uh, burdock root, lavender and marshmallow root, which I think is interesting. Um, uh, yeah. Burdock root, I'm guessing is in there mainly as a prebiotic. Um, marshmallow root, um, is, is a, is a gut soothing kind of herb. Um, whoa, I'll, I'll tell you what I do like. Um, oh, and then they've added a probiotic there as well. Uh, chances are it's dead. Uh, well, no, they're very specific about this. So probably it's not dead. Um, what I do like about this kibble is that it only has one synthetic mineral and no synthetic vitamins. And that's just zinc chelate. And chelate is the most organic, safest uh, mm. type of mineral that you can put in there. Uh, probably still comes from China, but it is, uh, is as organic and cool as you can get. So like overall, I would call this food a C plus because I would never give any kibble a better score than C plus. <laughs> but it, as far as kibbles are concerned, uh, it, it's it's not bad. I mean, look, looking at the label, I know there's been some talk about you know, they're sourcing now because they've moved down to the U.S. They're not in Canada anymore. But looking at the label, not bad. Not bad for kibble. Is there a reason why they would add lavender to a kibble? Like that you can think of? Like to me, I, I think lavender and I think sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so what they're doing is, and, and you know this, if you look at most kibble labels, you'll see all those chemical names mm -hmm. at the end, which are the synthetic vitamins mm -hmm. and minerals. When you don't have those, now you have to find plant-based sources and, and gotcha. animal-based sources of that stuff. So that's why this has quite a long ingredient list because they're trying to uh, get the AFCO minimum nutrients in there without breaking the bank because nobody's going to buy their kibble yeah. if it's 200 bucks a bag. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, not bad. Okay, next one is submitted by Jasna. I hope I said that correctly. And it is CDK9 Raw. And this is their website here. I've never heard of this. Duck Essentials Mix was the one specifically, um, specifically submitted. Yeah, so this isn't a complete and balanced food. Um, first of all, I'm going to comment not on the manufacturer, but on duck. I hate duck. Um, oh. I hate duck. I hate a lot of poultry because it is so ridiculously high in omega-6 fats that so first of all, duck is super high in fat. And then the lion's share of those fats are omega-6, uh, the inflammatory fatty acids. Um, I don't care what you mix it with. Your dog is probably going to be inflamed from that really, really gross amount of omega-6 fatty acid. Like looking at this, it's probably, uh, and I'm guessing, but it's probably the ratio of omega-6 to 3 is probably like 25 to 35 to 1. Right. And it should be more in line, you know, of one to one or five to one. If you, mm -hmm. if you find a ratio of five to one, you're doing a pretty good job. This I'm guessing is like 30 to one. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's not much I can do about this because, uh, um, oh yeah. And look at this. So we want twice as much protein as fat in our raw food. 
Well, we have less. What's going on here? 13 grams of protein, a whopping 19 grams of fat. Wow. Um, I, I wouldn't feed this to my dog. Now, I, I'm looking at this food and it's not nutritionally complete. So um, they're probably operating on the assumption that you're going to mix it with other proteins. I don't care what you mix this with your dog is still going to be eating an inflammatory diet. Mm. Um, it, unless you're feeding like a little quarter teaspoon a day, um, just way inflammatory in my opinion. I hope, um, I hope Jasna is watching this because I remember her talking about her dog in the pack and saying he was having some skin issues. Um, uh, so it, it's possible maybe it's coming, it's coming from his food. Yeah, I mean, it could be as simple as a sensitivity, but mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, the first thing that I look at is getting, like, guys, if, if, if you have an issue with your dog, the first thing that you really need to look at doing is uh, protecting his gut with probiotics in, in most cases, and in pretty much all cases with um, omega-3 fatty acids. Mm. So, yeah. Okay, next one is submitted by Kathy Blackman, and it is wholehearted pet food, dry dog food. There's like a new brand of dog food every five minutes. It's I, it's amazing. And this one, like really quick backstory on it, I couldn't find it. And I'm like, where is it? It kept coming up. The entire? Wow. It's made by Petco, which I believe is an American company. Yeah. And in Canada, their distributor is Canadian Tire. Hmm. Canadian Tire, for those of you in the U.S., is like a hardware store. Like yeah. It's like, what would you compare it to? It's like a small Walmart. Yeah, but it doesn't, it's like, it's like small Walmart, but it doesn't have like everything that Walmart has. It's like automotive, garden. hardwood garden, or sorry, hardware garden, house, house household stuff, goods. Yeah. And like outdoor activity stuff. All right. Let's take a look at this. Not usually dog food. Not, no, no, no. I've never gone to, to Canadian Tire to buy dog food. Yeah. The brand has the name Tire in it. <laughs> Oh, I don't think this is going to be good. And sorry, the, the, this is a kibble, right? Yes. This this one is a kibble. I don't think we're going to see a guarantee analysis or, or ingredient panel, are we? Product so story is never buy a food if you can't see the guarantee analysis. And the, uh, yeah, we, we, we got nothing to go on here. Yeah, I, well, I think that's, that's a good point too, though, because people would just buy a dog food and, and if you don't look at it and if you can't find the ingredients with a simple Google search. I mean, it, it's, it says here that the first, the first ingredient is real salmon. So I guess that in and of itself is like a bit of a... Oh, and peas. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let me see. Oh, here, yeah. Can you blow up the bag? So, um, hey I... There. Yeah, I, I want to see a food like this and I can show you guys what goes on here. Okay, hello. So here's what they've done. Um, well, there is more salmon meal than lentils. Oh my God. Oh my God. I just, when I see labels like this, I just feel bad for dogs. Canola oil. Yeah, so where do we start? So we've got salmon as a first ingredient. Um, now, most of these ingredients, when they're added to the kibble, are dry ingredients. They're probably no more than 10% moisture. But when you add fresh, this is such a pet food trick, it's ridiculous. But when you add fresh salmon to the food, now you've got something that's 60 or 70% water. So it gets bumped up to the top of the label because of the water weight. Mm. Mm -hmm because everything else in there is a dry ingredient. So salmon, once it's dried out with the rest of the stuff that's in there, would probably end up somewhere around the middle of, of the label. Um, lentils, uh, 
pea flour. So lentils, we've got those legumes again, which are loaded with glyphosate and full of lectins. Uh, pea flour, glyphosate, lectins, chickpeas, glyphosate, lectin, peas, glyphosate, lectin. Notice how they split the peas into peas and pea flour. Um, if they don't, it might put them up above salmon. And then we've got canola oil as our source of oil. Um, Which is weird. And then further down, there's also salmon oil as well. Yeah, they, well, yeah way down. So the, the canola oil is in there because they need some fat in the food and canola oil is super cheap. Uh, so we grow a lot of fly here in Canada and it's, it's rapeseed and the way that it has to be pr processed to get the oil out of them, it just requires a lot of chemicals to get it out. So stay away from canola oil only mm -hmm. always. Then we have sweet potatoes, eh, dried tomato pomace. It's just for fiber because your dog will get terrible, terrible runs eating this food. Uh, Flaxseed. And then we have natural flavor. Um, do you know what natural flavor is? It's code for MSG. Mm. It doesn't mean natural flavor isn't MSG always, but you can put MSG in your, in your dog's food and call it natural flavor. And if you're Americans, you're probably looking at flavor and going, why is there a U in there? It's the way we see it. Uh, and then they've got salmon oil, but they do that to hypothetically trick you into buying the food and thinking, oh, good, it's got salmon oil, but it's right above salt. Like the level of salt in that food is like 0 .0, you know, 0.03, it's like 0.03%. Mm. So you can imagine just how little salmon oil is probably in there. And then you've got dried chicory root. That's there as a uh, prebiotic. Then you've got a whole bunch of probiotics because, hey, they're popular right now, but these will be probably dead because there's no guarantee of the CFU. So that higher quality kibble, the origin said, here is how many CFU are in that food. They're not allowed to do that unless it's been analyzed mm -hmm. and they can prove that it's there. These guys are like, look, we added probiotics. They're probably dead but we added them so you know unless they guarantee the amount of, of, of cfu don't pay attention to probiotics they're just there to trick you into thinking it's a better food than it is uh and then we've got zinc proteinate copper proteinate ferrous sulfate so yeah now we have some cheaper forms of of minerals in there and uh there's a lot of hard things to pronounce yeah 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 uh sodium selenite toxic run away from sodium selenite, super inflammatory and uh, toxic. And uh, it's just a really, really uh, crappy food. The, the, the longer uh, your list of synthetic vitamins and minerals, the worse the food is. I wish we had, a, I, I wanted to find a food that had, surprisingly, there's no free amino acids in here. I can't even believe that there's no free amino acids in here. Um, and I wish we had have looked at a food today that has them because it's a really, really good indication. I said, hypothetically, there might not be very much salmon in here. There probably is actually, because there's no, uh, there's no free amino acids added. You'll see amino acids added like taurine or L-carnitine or methionine uh, when the food is low quality and relies on plant-based incomplete proteins as opposed to uh, meat-based, animal-based proteins. So that's when you'll start to see the free amino acids on those labels. I'm sure as we start looking at more foods, we'll see that though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Are we just doing those guys? Or are we, are we going to put in a pinch header for the one that we couldn't pull up? Uh, we're at 33 minutes. So I can do, I can pull one more if you like. I have one that has been asked on all three pages today. Things have been chosen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hit me. Come yeah. Back, let's yeah. do one more. This is always such a fascinating topic to talk about. Cause like, oh, someone who doesn't always know necessarily or, or or who's newer to the whole world of, of natural dogs care and it's like oh these things on the surface they oh they should be good for your dog because yeah. we're being mm -hmm. they're good for us they're good for you they're good for everything and then it's, it's just like really eye-opening 
it, it you know it's eye opening because we started um, manufacturing our own supplements, mm-hmm. and as we're looking into the quality of supplements out there, it's just the same. Everybody, not everybody, the vast majority of companies are just looking to trick you into buying cheap products, mm. right? And, and and they look for buzzwords without really adding that quality into the food. Mm. But we feed into them because we want high quality at a low price tag. And so it, it, you can you can manufacture the best food in the world, but if it's $20 a day, then you're probably not gonna feed it to your dog. Yeah. Um, uh, the, one thing, the one thing we didn't do is we didn't give it a grade. Is that our first failing grade? Oh, okay, so if, uh, if origin was a C plus, I would call that it's it's a solid D. Um, it's a solid D because it, it doesn't have uh, free amino acids. If those free mm. amino acids are in there, it probably would have been a D minus. All right. What, I need, what's your next? One? Which one is it, Alex? It's the carnivora that I sent you. I didn't, you didn't send me anything. I'm going to pick one. Okay. (laughs) I picked one. Okay. It's always me. Two. Okay. I picked one. Alex wasn't quick enough. I don't see evidence of this. This new oh, oh, go. I'll provide. I just picked the next one on our list. Oh, so which okay. one is this? What's it called? It oh. is called I'll provide submitted to us by Marty Wheeler. And is this a kibble? Is it raw? No, it's raw. raw. Okay. All right. Well, let's start with a guarantee analysis and we'll look at fat and protein. It's where I like to start with a raw food. Calculator ready. <laughs> you don't have to do that for this food. Okay. There won't be any carbohydrate. Oh my gosh. What's happening with your uh computer's really slow. Oh. It doesn't give you what's in each one. It just gives you a list of their ingredients. It has to. It didn't. Is there a picture of the package that we can look at? Like they're they're required by AFCO to kind of to kind of do this. Oh, here, there we go, right there. Where? That's not the guarantee analysis. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay. Hey, look at that, boys and girls. Protein, seventeen percent. Fat, just under 10%. Hmm. That's roughly two to one. So yay. So, and you know what? It's probably got a little bit of a heftier price tag because that's what goes with protein's expensive. It's the most expensive part of your dog's uh, uh, diet, right? So um, uh, so it can be done. There are lots and lots of raw foods out there that have roughly that two to one ratio of protein to fat. So now we're going to look at the uh, ingredients. And so we've got turkey bone, sure. uh, turkey heart, turkey lover, liver, not lover, liver. <laughs> turkey lover. Thanksgiving's coming up <laughs> in Canada. Mm. Ours is in October. Yeah. Uh, and we don't have your big sales. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, it's got like a couple of organ meats. And so, so I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and then next we have a uh, carrot, not my favorite. Carrots are a little bit uh, like inflammatory. They're not the worst thing you can give your dog. They're kind of like meh. Broccoli, I I love. I would love it even more if it was broccoli sprouts because they are powerful uh, inhibitors of the NFR2 pathway, which is uh, which decreases inflammation in your dog. Squash, kind of unnecessary, but eh, it's fine. Uh, spinach, sure. Cranberry, yum. Uh, flaxseed, sure. Coke, oh God, there's coconut oil again. Uh, yeah, I got a problem with coconut oil because lauric acid is inflammatory to the gut and um, 
and 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 it's rich in in in, in saturated fats. I, I do not love the coconut oil in that. I, I and then and then we've got salmon oil again. If you're if you're feeding a raw food with salmon oil, just make sure of two things. Make sure that you package it really 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 well because if if ice crystals are allowed to form on the food, that's what's going to puncture mm. those double bonds in in the fatty acids and make them go rancid and then when you thaw it out just thaw it out in a sealed container and then the the fish oil won't be as big a deal um yeah kelp you need that to balance most raw foods and then oregano turmeric yeah and then again there's our mixed uh tocopherols like the vitamin e because you need that to pass uh, afco requirements not because the manufacturer wants to put them in there so overall it's I, i'd like to see it, it gets a good grade for uh for the protein and, mm -hmm. and less fat makes it gets a really good grade for that um a decent grade because it's got heart and liver so that's fine i would like to see a couple more organs in there but it's not bad and i'm gonna give it a a, a a bit of a dent there because of the salmon oil and a bigger dent because of the coconut oil. So overall, I would probably give this food and maybe a B minus. You know what's really interesting? No, I shouldn't say that. I guess I, I guess I should score raw foods better than that. What did I score the other food? You remember? Uh, B plus. Yeah. No, the first one was B minus. So you definitely was it B minus? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, let's give it a B plus. B plus. I find it interesting that and kind of confusing that on the packaging it says veget oh veterinarian. I read that as vegetarian. And I was like vegetarian formula. And I was like, I don't understand. It's turkey. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Do All we right. want to do, do do one more or that's it? Or if, if people are there, they're hanging out and they're happy, we can do another one. Oh, uh, there's a few people. Let me pick one from the comments here. I'm going to stop sharing so you guys can't see my thing. I'm going you to the first Alex one. Sent you? Pardon? You still don't have Alex's that she sent you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got it. Beef dinner by Carnivora. Okay. Beef dinner. Oh, my, all this talk of food is making me hungry. Oh, my gosh. It has to be the last food because I'm going to have yeah. to pee a little bit too. <laughs> Okay, beef dinner, carnivore. Let's get some. Here's another Canadian connection. So this food, uh, this company is a Canadian company. And is this kibble again, or is it no. raw? Well, it is a kibble. Sorry, okay. it is a kibble. So it's uh, yeah. This guy has a pretty hefty price tag. I think it's actually more expensive to feed this than it is some raw diets. It's, it's a wow. pricey little bugger. Mm. So let's do the, uh, let's, let's add them up here. Ready. So we're going to take, what is this? Oh, this is raw. I was thinking carnivore. Never mind. Perfect. But it is a Canadian company. These guys are out west. Okay, so this is a raw food. You don't have to calculate. Perfect. So uh, we've got um, protein at 19%. That bodes well. Fat. It's quite low. 5%. See, now I'm feeling like this might not be enough fat, but it could be because I know these guys sell oil. So it could be that they say, we're going to let you add your oil to your food, mm. right? So that doesn't bother me as a raw feeder. So I, I like to like get really, really low low fat meat into my dogs because now I can now I can play with the oils right I'll get some ahi flour in there and some green lip muscle oil and I can just make it the way I want it um do we have ingredients on this these guys have been around for a long time mm. it, it's not an ingredient yeah so the great thing about carnivora is that they're whole animal blends they pretty much take the entire animal and blend it all up which is why it's low fat isn't that fantastic mm -hmm. Plastic. Um, they, you know, the problem is they don't get enough animals, so they're not as widely distributed in Canada as they should be. Interesting. Um, I, I give this. This is a really. This I would give this food. Now we're into the A's. We're into the A's. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I would like it better if it was grass fed. But honestly, with that low fat, it it could be uh, grass fed. It's got it doesn't some, have an ingredient list, but it does say what's in it, just not in the does. order. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I like uh, I like the the, um, the is just in there to kind of balance out the minerals. Um, 
in, in the romaine too. I, I, I like the fruits and veggies that they've added to this for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so 66% muscle meat, 7% bone. Okay, 10% organs. I would like to see more organs in this, um, but for commercial food, like a lot of dogs don't tolerate organs. So I, I understand why they don't go more than 10% organs on a commercial food. Uh, this is, I love, I love this company and I love what they're doing and I love their food. Um, so if I were to add my own oils to this and maybe a tiny bit more organ meat, I would love the heck out of this. This is a, uh, you know, the only thing, the only reason it wouldn't get an A plus is because everything's not organic and mm. grass finished. So this guy, this, this score is about as high as you can score. Like this is a real solid A, this food. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think we, they used to supply like the Eastern part mm -hmm. of, of Canada. And as you can imagine, it's not easy to find whole animals to grind up and put into patties. Mm -hmm. And probably from the consumer, they're like, I don't know. Like, what am I going to find in this patty? They, they're not gross. <laughs> like, they don't put the heads in, I, I don't think. Yeah, it, it says here that uh, what they don't put in. Yeah. I don't remember where I saw it. There it is. Yeah. No, no your horns either. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 gosh, I love this food. It just can't be mass, mass, mass distributed. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Good food. I think three locations in Ontario that sell it. Yeah, it's a shame. Well, I think that's all we have time for. All right. And I'm scared to try and bring up another food. What's that? <laughs> and I'm scared to try and bring up another food. You know, let's, let's keep these posts and these threads going. And, and I have no problem coming, coming around every week or so. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at some foods and we'll help you guys out with them. Because it's kind of fun. I, I like mm. looking at foods. So. Yeah. And uh, thanks for submitting your foods, guys, because we, we would just randomly be looking at things yeah. if you didn't. So. Yeah. <laughs> thanks so much for joining us again. Yeah. Hope yeah. we helped a little bit. And uh, we'll see you next week and we'll look at some more foods. Absolutely. Have a good day, everyone. That's the awkward moment where yeah. we're still streaming. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Where, where the button doesn't hit fast enough. We're still live. We are still live. We're still live, Chelsea. How do we not be live anymore? Chelsea. I hit the button. <laughs> it's not working. Button didn't work. <laughs>